hello everyone welcome back to my channel how are you all doing nice that you're watching another video in this video i'm going to talk about five facts you didn't know about islam these are actually questions that many people are asking me since i am interested to convert to islam and i am learning a lot about islam and making videos about it and these are questions that I actually asked people in the beginning of my journey learning more about Islam. So I'm going to share with you what I learned about it until this moment. What is actually the truth behind these misunderstandings uh, from the religion of Islam. Uh, it actually surprised me so much and many things that I thought were actually in reality so different. So I'm just going to start. And the first question is, should Muslim women wear a headscarf, a hijab? And I understand where this question is coming from, because a lot of people, especially in Europe, they think that Muslim women are oppressed when they see they are wearing a headscarf. I learned that this is absolutely not true. Islam is the religion of peace and oppression is forbidden in Islam. Muslims are not allowed to oppress others or to harm someone else or to harm even yourself. And a fun fact, Islam was actually the first to give women rights. Islam is also the religion of equality and justice. In the Quran, Allah actually asked the woman to wear a hijab. And I know now that everything that Allah is asking from us is because there is a reason behind it. So actually, if we listen to what Allah is saying to us, it is better for us. It is always better to dress modestly and even before I was actually interested uh, to really convert to Islam, um, I one of the first things that I did was dressing more modestly because it makes me feel more comfortable and it makes me feel more confident. But one of the reasons that I know is that it is also good to show others that you are a Muslim woman. So if people are seeing you and you wear the hijab, they see that you are Muslim and that means that they can trust you and that you don't lie and that you are not a toy for anybody. And one of the things that I find also very beautiful is that in Islam, beauty is not the most important thing. Or actually, it is more about the good deeds that you are doing. And to cover yourself, it means that you don't want to show yourself, to show off, or um, that you are only going to be accepted when you are beautiful, because in this time it is actually uh, the opposite around. But I know it is very difficult in this time to dress modest. And I think it's also going to be very, very hard for me when I'm going to take my shahada, to um, wear the hijab because I know that people are going to look at me and think that I am oppressed or that I'm doing that maybe for someone else and I know it is very very hard in this time especially because in this time it is normalized to dress more naked or to dress yourself with more tidy clothes so i understand if it is very hard for some people especially when you converted to islam and you are not used uh, to dress like this and your family and your friends are not dressing like this however i think it is very very beautiful to dress modestly and it is very beautiful to wear the hijab and to be a proud Muslim. And another fact is that dressing modest doesn't count only for Muslim women, but also for Muslim men. Also Muslim men need to dress modest. So that is also one of the misunderstandings. Muslims are not allowed to eat pork and to drink alcohol. I was actually very happy when I learned this fact about Islam. That is because I was already vegetarian for seven years. So this was something very easy for me in this uh, stage of my life. Uh, it was difficult for me before, uh, of course, when I started to be a vegetarian, to 
leave all the food with meat and to tell people um, even when you are invited in someone's home and people cook for you that you are not eating that what they may be prepared for you and you can feel ashamed about that but the fact that Allah tells us that pork is haram in Islam is also because there is a reason behind it. Pigs are actually eating everything and that's why the meat is not clean. It can uh, contain a lot of bacteria or parasites and besides that pork contains also a lot of fat. There are a lot of recent studies that shows us how bad pork is for us. So this is again one of the proofs actually that what Allah told us is actually the truth that he is saying this uh, because it is better for us not because he want to make it difficult for us or anything and Allah created everything for a reason so it is not that pigs in general are haram but Allah created them for other purposes in this life and not for us to eat them and pig is not the only meat that Muslims are not allowed to eat. There are a lot of other animals that are forbidden for Muslims to eat. So that is something where you can uh, look into as well because that is maybe something that not everybody knows. There are just certain types of animals that uh, Muslims can eat. And one of the other facts that I learned what I didn't know about Islam is that Muslims are actually very focused on animal welfare and uh, for me as an animal lover this is very important. Um, I learned that how Muslims are treating animals and also the way how they slaughter animals in a halal way is actually the best for the animal. If you are looking at the industry, the bio industry that is happening right now all over the world, how they treat the animals, that is really terrible. And that was actually also the reason for me why I became vegetarian. Before I learned about Islam, to be honest, I thought that Muslims didn't care about the feelings of the animal. But I learned now that it is actually the opposite. And Muslims care a lot about nature. For example, if you cut a tree, you should always plant a new tree again. And you have to respect everything, all the creations of Allah. So now we can talk about the fact that Muslims are not allowed to drink alcohol. Of course, everybody knows how bad alcohol is for you to consume. It can damage your brain. It can be very addictive for some people if they just start to drink one glass of alcohol they cannot stop anymore so they drink too much and the next day um, people can feel really really bad after drinking alcohol and when you are drunk you are not really yourself it's actually very likely that you are not telling the truth or that you do things or say things that you actually didn't want to and that you and that you are going to regret the next day. That alcohol is not allowed in Islam was something where I was actually very confused about because even when I went to Egypt I saw a lot of Egyptian people also drinking alcohol and I saw also Muslims at school and all around who are actually drinking beer or any other type of alcohol. So I was very confused, like is it actually uh, forbidden or not? <laughs> but it is actually forbidden and I think that is really better. And it is better for everyone, if you are Muslim or not Muslim, it's always better to don't drink alcohol. Is Islam only a religion for Arabs? I hear this question a lot. There are also people who tell me, oh, you are a wannabe Arab or <laughs> anything like this. And especially there are many people who think if you are Muslim, you are automatically an Arab. But it is not like this, obviously. Did you know that in reality, actually only 15% of all the Muslims are Arab? The country with the biggest Muslim community is actually Indonesia and all the Muslim majority countries have their own language, their own culture. Islam is for everyone regardless of race. The Quran is sent down for all the humankind. 
And another fact is that Islam is the second biggest religion in the world after Christianity and Islam is also the fastest growing religion in the world. So we can say that in the future Islam is going to be the most practiced religion. And Allah means God in Arabic, so even Christians for example who speak Arabic will call God Allah. Can Muslim men marry four wives? This is one of the facts in Islam. Uh, that I actually already heard about and it is something that actually sounds really weird to me because it is something um, what is strange in my culture but I understand now that in my culture it is definitely not uh, better or anything. The fact is that indeed Muslim men can marry four wives. However, it is not easy. It is actually very complicated and very difficult if Muslim men want to do so because the rules are very strict and that's also why actually a lot of Muslim men don't want to marry four wives. Most Muslim men, as far as I know, are married with only one wife. Is Islam the religion of terrorism? Many people in this time unfortunately think like this because the media makes it look like Islam is the religion of terrorism. In fact it is not true. I mentioned it before and in Islam it is forbidden to harm others or to harm yourself. Terrorism, oppression of women, um, forced marriages, all of this is strictly forbidden in Islam. So don't trust everything that you see on the television or on the media because the fact is that this is not true and Islam is the religion of peace and terrorism is forbidden in Islam. This is one fact that I actually not really clearly knew before because when I was younger it looked also to me uh, like to do terror attacks or to harm others who are not Muslim for example. I thought it was something possible in Islam. I think it is very important to learn the true Islam, to read about Islam how does it work in the month of Ramadan? When I heard first about uh, the month of Ramadan, I thought that uh, Muslims are uh, just not eating. I thought they were allowed to drink and I thought they didn't eat to feel what the poor people are feeling. Actually, it's not like this. I mean, it is very important to think about the poor people in Ramadan, especially in Ramadan, a lot of Muslims uh, give charity uh, to the poor people, but this is something you always have to do as a Muslim. Wherever you can, Muslims must help the people in need or the poor people. And I thought the month of Ramadan was only very, very difficult. But now that I fasted also the whole month of Ramadan, last Ramadan, I know that it gives you a very special feeling and I felt really really good in that month. It's also that it clears your mind and you can see the things more in perspective, what is actually important, where you are worrying about or something what is not really important, especially when you don't eat and drink all the day and it clears your body. Even recent studies say uh, that it is good to fast. A lot of people are also doing in intermittent fasting nowadays. But Muslims are actually also not drinking all the day, so they are not eating and not drinking from sunrise to sunset. But the month actually brings also a lot of joy and uh, Muslims are normally together with family and friends during this month and um, it gives really special feelings and really good feelings as well. It gives also a feeling of oneness, uh, especially in Muslim majority countries where everybody is fasting and then everybody is making food uh, for each other and um, eating together. So that is really, really nice in the Muslim community. 
But the most important thing is, of course, uh, during the month of Ramadan to um, connect with Allah and the feeling uh, of being grateful for everything that Allah gives you. Uh, you can also feel it when you are not eating and drinking, how blessed you are actually with the food and the water and drinks that you have during the day normally. And the purpose of Ramadan is also to read Quran in this month. You can take your time to read uh, Quran and to think about your sins and to ask for forgiveness, um, all of this together. And that makes the month of Ramadan very, very nice and very spiritual. So it is a very, very beautiful month. And I think you have to experience it by yourself to understand how it feels like. And for me, uh, I didn't get the full experience yet because I, I am not surrounded by Muslims. Uh, my family isn't Muslim. My friends are not Muslim. So, so I can only imagine how beautiful it is when you are surrounded by your loved ones or when you are surrounded uh, by a lot of Muslims in a Muslim majority country where you meet your neighbors and you share food with each other and when you are going to the mosque uh, all together I think that is very beautiful and uh, people are asking me if in Ramadan people are only eating a lot of sugar <laughs> but it is actually not like this uh, of course Muslims are not eating and not drinking during the whole day from sunrise till sunset and the moment after Maghreb when you are allowed to eat and they eat just normal food obviously and drink a lot of water um, and especially it is also important to eat healthy foods because the next day you are not going to be able to eat and drink again so you must feed your body healthy food in order to to feel good that day if you're going to eat a lot of fat and a lot of sugar it's only going to be more difficult for you and you're going to feel only more thirsty and more tired um, so it is actually also a month where you have to take care about yourself and about others Another bonus fact that I want to add in this video that I didn't know before I learned more about Islam is that unlike other religions the Quran has been 100% preserved and never changed ever since it was sent down more than 1400 years ago. That is something that really amazed me, it is something that I didn't know. I know that a lot of people are asking me why I didn't convert to Islam yet why I didn't take my Shahada yet and um, I want to take it step by step um, but I feel that I am very very close so inshallah I'm going to take my Shahada very very soon I am actually someone who cares a lot about what other people think of me so for me this is going to be a very very big step and I want to prepare it very well and I want to know that I am very sure about my decision and that it's not just something temporarily. So I'm also talking a lot with people around me about it and sometimes they ask me questions and then I think, oh, I actually don't know the answer uh, on that question. So when I'm ready here, I want to take my Shahada and feel good about it and feel secure about it. It is not easy, um, but it is a very, very beautiful and interesting journey where I'm going through. And I want to thank you all for uh, supporting me. It helps me so, so much. And I've learned a lot from you guys as well. So I want to thank you very much for that. And I hope that you enjoy to watch my videos and um, maybe also some people who are also interested to convert to Islam. If you are not subscribed yet to my channel, don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any other videos. And I wish you all a very beautiful day. I see you soon in one of my next videos. Bye!